Welcome to another biblically-based look into today's news from Christian Voice New Zealand. Now here's Mike Bain. During the Christmas New Year break, the family succumbed to a positive test for COVID. Now, while everybody was out enjoying the great summer weather, Mandy and I were isolating here at home. Well, once we managed to get through the couple of days of feeling absolutely yuck, we turned our attention to indoor activities such as playing cards, which wasn't overly successful, reading and watching inane TV programs. Now, as a subscriber to Amazon, who wouldn't be for eight bucks a month, I found the trilogy of Left Behind movies, and I have to admit, I've never watched them before. Well, each movie dealt with the rise of the power of the Antichrist and the One World Government. Interesting, one of the big talking points of 2022 has been around the government's use of fear of, to control people, and yet, in the movies, this didn't appear to be a tactic, which was what I was expecting. All I saw was the other type of person similar to us in 2022. We turn them as sheeple. I know it was Hollywood and it was easier for the scriptwriters to have the majority acting like nodding dogs in agreement. But for me, I'd seen better acted and smoother productions of Armageddon. But if there's one takeaway from the movies, it was the premise of the storyline is it's where today's culture is being led. Note I use the word led as opposed to heading. Today we live in a world which has gone from being confident and moving forward to one fearful of the unknown. As we look in the rear view mirror and watch year 2022 become a distant memory, we look forward to 2023. We do so with perhaps the greatest trepidation I've ever witnessed in my short time here on this planet. But I shouldn't be surprised because in Luke 21:25 he says that there will be signs in the sun, moon and stars on the earth. Nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. It seems the longer we remain here, the more things people are finding to become fearful of. And yet they're afraid of all the wrong things. They're afraid that the global temperatures are going to rise a degree or two in the next hundred years. They're afraid of the thing called climate change. They're afraid of misgendering people. They're afraid of the public backlash that'll come if they don't toe the line of wokeness. Well, let me just tell you up front that this feeling of losing is every bit as part of the spirit of the Antichrist. This demonically designed spiritual state of mind is designed to both oppress and discourage you, the believer, from living in the victory that Christ has already won at the cross. Well, thanks to the non-stop style of media propaganda, weak-kneed politicians, woke pastors and silent pulpits, this perpetual tsunami of bad news is designed to keep you in a personal state of depression and deflation. Conversely, it's very much a battle of distraction so that you focus on the never-ending litany of drama coming out of our nation's capital. And there's been plenty. So how do we get from here to the time of the Antichrist? You know, numerous nations under the thumb of the WEF influence have begun implementing globalist in line policies, things like sustainable development, depopulation, politically weaponized migration, carbon footprint reduction policies, and open borders. Now, these have been disastrous and are designed to, as such, to create the necessary chaos that provides the globalists with the opportunity to consolidate their power. The world is continuing to race ahead in every spectrum of technology. This is both quickly outpacing our ability to defend against all of the threats, and is moving beyond the technological capabilities as described in the Book of Revelation. For example, artificial superintelligence, colonizing the moon and Mars, etc. Modern mankind has reached, or is about to reach, its own Tower of Babel moment, where God puts his thumb down and stops mankind in his tracks through a sudden calamitous event known as the Rapture of the Church. Now, here's a few things to watch out for as 2023 unfolds. The, digi the digitalization of currencies, the building of a new European military force, the opening and influence of the first truly ecumenical, globalist-endorsed religious headquarters, and that's going to be situated in Abu Dhabi, uh, 
An increase in the surveillance of our health and well-being as depopulation plans are put in place. A changing of the guard of the superpower nations and the continuing rise of China's influence on our planet. The advancement of technology and biometrics, artificial intelligence, space, robotics, communications, quantum technology, human cloning and genetic manipulation. Of course, we cannot factor in events that we have no control over, or the deaths of the world leaders who are acting today as a break on the World Economic Forum agenda. I know it's a lot to take in, but really, how did it get so late so soon? I don't know if it's because I'm now in my 60s, or we as a human race are just that much busier. But 2022 flew by very quickly. I reckon the longer we wait on the Lord, the faster things here on Terra Firma will continue to speed up, thus adding a new understanding to the Lord's return coming quickly. And while much of what we see is coming at us like a freight train, just remember what Christ's words were to the Church of Philadelphia, and by extension to all believers alive in this last generation. He said, because you've kept my command to persevere, I'll also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I'll write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of my heaven, comes down out of heaven from my God. And I'll write on him my new name. So he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Looking back at the Left Behind trilogy, regardless of the fear governments may use, they can only control populations if they allow themselves to be. One strong message came through for the survivors, or those left behind following the rapture, was the truth found in God's Word, the Bible. Hearing and reading God's Word is not enough. Acknowledging and repenting of our sins and accepting Jesus as your Saviour is the only way to receive God's truly wonderful blessing. Amen. Thank you for watching. You can see more podcasts like this by subscribing to Christian Voice New Zealand. For more information about our work or if you're moved to donate, jump online to our webpage, ChristianVoiceNewZealand.com.